you are watching Well of the Fathers. Praise God. Welcome this morning to Kingdom Daily Broadcast via one of the Father's Prophetic Channel. It's been a blessing all this way. And I pray that the Lord bless you as you keep on following us every day. Uh, hallelujah. This morning we are looking at the image of the heavenly man. Praise God. Can we just say a word of prayer? Father, we thank you this morning. We honor you. We appreciate you. We give you thanks. Uh, the maker of heaven and earth, Maka Bedosi Parahatia, O Shaka Labadeya Bedoska, you that all the blessings flow from. We thank you and we honor you. We glorify your neighbor in Yeshua's name. We pray. Hallelujah. So we are looking at the um, the heavenly man this morning, and the heavenly man is a man that is born from above, a man that is born, a man that has come to the place of the measure of the stature of the fullness of God, a man that is a representation of what God had in mind when he said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness is a man that will bear the dominion of the age to come. Is a man that has the scepter of authority. Like uh, Judas, uh, Jacob said to Judah, the scepter will not depart from Judah until Shiloh come, until whom it belongs to. So until whom it belongs to. This is the man of the seventh day. The man of the seventh day, the man that Yeshua refers to that on the seventh day, I shall be perfected, praise God. So we see uh, through the scripture that the scripture said that which is born of flesh is flesh. In other words, a man in the flesh cannot reproduce or bat the kingdom of God upon the earth. So it takes a heavenly man to bring forth God's kingdom. Hallelujah. So it takes a heavenly man to bat the kingdom of God. That's why the scripture said that the husband man had been waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. Now because the destiny of the earth, the, the kingdom to come will rest upon their shoulder. And this is why heaven had been waiting for such a man. Hallelujah. So this man had been on a journey. He had been in the making for the past 2,000 years. So Paul says something very interesting in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 49. He said, as you are born the image of the man of dust, as you are born the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. So it is destined that a people that will walk upon the earth, they will bear the image of the heavenly man. In other words, they will be the expression, the full expression of Christ. The full expression. Hallelujah. When Yeshua was here upon the earth, he said to Nicodemus, hallelujah, no man has been to heaven except the Son of Man who is in heaven. In other words, except the Son of Man who is in heaven, a man whose operation is heavenly, whose life is heavenly, whose economy is heavenly, everything about him is heavenly. Why? Because he has been born of God. So that is a special born. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So we see that this man is destined and programmed by God to be better on the seventh millennium, which is the third day that Christ spoke of. Now, Yeshua said, on the fourth day, I shall be perfected. Why? Because Yeshua was standing on the fourth day. Now, because from uh, Adam to Yeshua was 4,000 years. Amen. So, Yeshua had the seventh day in mind. Now, because this is the seventh day, the day of perfection, the day the work will finish. And man will enter the eternal rest of God. 
what I call the jubilee of creation. Hallelujah. So it's interesting that now I say this, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 50. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Now as long as flesh is resident, man can put on, man can put on incorruptible body, incorruptible, which is actually the goal of salvation. Now, because Paul said, in this we groan, in this we labor, our groaning, our labor, our advancing into the fullness of God is that we put on incorruptible body, is that we put on incorruptible body for this mortality, we put on immortality, this corruptible, we put on incorruptible. Now, Paul is saying that flesh and blood cannot inherit it, it's impossible. Praise God. So our boast must be that we are found complete in the image of the heavenly man. That should be our, our, our boasting. That we are born in the image. I am completely tired of this ministry that it boasts is always on the corruptible things of this earth. The corruptible things of this earth. Hallelujah. Our calling is actually to incorruptible things. That is our calling. Now, uh, he said that we are begotten again to a living hope or to a lively hope. First Peter 1 verse 3. To inherit that which is incorruptible, that which is undefined, that which does not fade away, reserved for us in the heaven. So we are called to inherit the incorruptible, but it's a heavenly man. A man that has been born from the heaven that we inherit this. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mashaka Debo Siata. So everything that we are inheriting on earth will end with time, perish with time. It doesn't matter what it is. Hallelujah. We boast of aircraft, schools, hospital, large auditorium, other things of this earth. We are boasting on the things that we corrupt with time. Hallelujah. They are just temporary. They are temporary. They are to give us temporary relief here on earth. Now because the corruptible things we acquire here, they are actually necessary for earth life. They are important. Amen. They are important. They are so nice. They are legitimate. So we need them. But that is not the end of the faith. That is not the true inheritance. Remember Yeshua said, you know, if you are not faithful with the... Uh, you know, on, um, on, on righteous mammon, who then will give you the true inheritance. So there is a true inheritance. There is a true inheritance. There is riches of Christ that surpass the riches of the earth life. And this actually the measure of the heavenly man. For Yeshua said, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. A man's life does not consist. The measure of a man is not in the things he acquired. The measure of a man is in the life of Christ has entered. The measure of a man is the measure of Christ. That's why I have such thing as, in the future and former starting, such as unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. So when Christ returned, when Christ returned and the saints are clothed with incorruptible, I doubt whether any other thing we I will seek on earth to be relevant. That's this the necessity of what we're talking about. Paul said, What sorry, um Peter said, What manner of a man ought you to be? What manner of a man ought you to be? Are you uh, will you still be a man that had flesh? What manner of a man? Oh my god, hallelujah. So it is incredible made that we inherit the kingdom of God. For we know that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Father. Hallelujah. That's why we're speaking God's word. It's God's word that will raise us to this stature, to this expression. Now, the full expression of the image of the heavenly man is a viable proof that the redemptive work has been completed in our soul and on our body. Hallelujah. So we have left so much emphasis, you know, on the impute and the fivefold ministry with respect to grooming 
uh, a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of God. Now, there's also another dimension. Now, remember, there's an aspect in the building of the temple of Solomon that was carried out by the goldsmiths. Amen. Hallelujah. So, in the same name, there is an aspect in the building of the fullness of Christ that the fivefold cannot supply. The fivefold cannot supply that. It is God. God supplies that. It is only the Lord that supplies that. Hallelujah. So, God came in to harness the fullness in us. God came in to harness it. He brings us into the experiences. That is beyond man's understanding. Man's understanding. He takes us through such a spirit just to perfect his work in us. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the Lord sometimes takes us through circumstances just to groom us. Hallelujah. To be uh, whom he wants us to be. So the good smith that passes us through the fire for purification so that he can see himself in us. It is God that does that work. And that is the final work for the images of the man of the heaven, the heavenly man. What manner of man ought you to be? We are born the image of the earthly man. We are born the image through which we can scan. We see lies in us. We see greed in us. We see covetousness. Those things are the image. So that image of the natural man is actually the character of the natural man, a character of the fleshly man, the things that you see in a fleshly man. So you see envy, you see malice, you see jealous. Now all of those things are the content. These are the image of the, um, of the earthly man. But here you see the image of the heavenly man. There is no corruption. There is nothing empty about it. Is the fullness of Christ, is the expression of the life of Christ, and this is the terminus of our calling, is the terminus of our journey in God. Till we all come. So there is a terminus of divine expectation, is a place called the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That is where God is expecting us. That is where Apostle Paul, that was actually the goal of Apostle Paul to arrive at that spiritual end. That's what I say, if by any means I might attain the resurrection of the dead. If by any means I might attain the resurrection. So it is a man that have resurrected. In the inward resurrection is such a man that is called the heavenly man because he had the capacity for ascension, capacity to navigate the heavens, capacity. Now he becomes the ladder. He becomes the vision that Jacob saw. That was why Yeshua said to, you know, Nathaniel, that you just uh, hear this and, uh, and believe. Because you hear this and believe, you will see heavens open and the Son of Man ascending and descending. In other words, I'm going to make you a heavenly man, a man that ascends and uh, descends. That's a man that brings heaven on earth. That's a man that brings the fullness of Christ. He is a ladder. This is a man that can fulfill the uh, sayings of Yeshua as it is in heaven. Let him be here on earth. And so it's a man that will bring heaven on earth. He traffic heaven. He brings heaven on earth. His transactions are divine. His transactions are divinity. Hallelujah. Makaboshia Braduska Hata. And Delagabahatioshia. A Predo Samahatia. Muria Kavena. Thank you, Father. And Shekania Labaruska Hata, Brando Shiaka, Lebaina Jana Sakaya, with Shakala Bahaya Mosa Brenda Hata. I perceive that right now God wants us to mortify the members which are on earth. Fornication, adultery, covetousness, malice, emulation, all of those things. There is no such thing as fleshly manifestation in the life of the man of the heaven. No such a thing as we are born the image of the man of the earth. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. That is our call to arrive at the place where we can express all the fullness of Christ. Where we can 
uh, we can just say, like Yeshua said, as you see me, you have seen the Father. As you see me, or if you see me, you've seen the Father. That is the goal. Now the goal is that we become. That is the goal of redemption, which you saw uh, in our Hebrew chapter uh, 1, verse 3. He is the brightness of his glory. He is the express image of his person. The brightness of God's glory. The express image of the person of God. So man is destined by divine ordination to become the reflection of heaven. And that's it, a heavenly man. The heavenly man is the man who comes to show the creation their God. Now because God destined it that God will walk upon the earth, that the entire creatures of God will see their God. That's why in Ephesians, he said to this intent, and uh, through the church, hallelujah, the angelic beings, angelic rain, all the creation, they will now see, they manifest the fullness, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God in his, all his innumerable aspects. In all the dimension, we are seeing the fullness of God. This is a high calling, my brother. It's a high calling, just like Apostle Paul uh, said, I'm pressing to the mark of this high calling. This is the high calling that will come to a point where there is no longer anything empty of flesh. It is then that we have brought the image of the earth and then take upon us the image of the heavenly. God bless you this morning and strengthen you in all your way and cause you to flourish in Yeshua's name, I pray. Amen. Thank you.